Good evening. We welcome you here to our city council meeting. We will call our meeting to order of this regular session of our uh, city council for tonight. Uh, we announce that we have a full quorum present. All are here in attendance. Uh, next on our agenda is our opening ceremony. Tom Hun, you are tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it very much. Um, I would like to invite all of you to stand up and do a bless the legend with me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda will be approval of the minutes from our April 1st regular meeting to the Council for Action. Mayor, I'll move for approval of the April 1st, uh, 2014 regular meeting. Councilman Vincent, Vincent uh, has made a motion to approve the minutes. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, and uh, we have a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll place the motion for a vote. All in favor of the motion to approve our minutes from April 1st, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. Next, we begin with our awards, ceremonies, and proclamations. And so we will begin first, we'll recognize Karen Lang for the Employee of the Month. Um, I would like to read what was submitted by Ryan Pruitt. Pruitt sorry. Um, Dan Ward, Public Works Department, and with Dan Mind Standing. Thank you. I would like to nominate Dan Ward for Employee of the Month. Dan recently accepted a new position at Fleet Maintenance requiring heavy duty equipment, large trucks, snow removal equipment, fire trucks, and many other types of equipment. In the short time that Dan has been doing his job, his new job, he has demonstrated an amazing ability to be self-taught. Dan has taken advantage of all types of medium to learn the process necessary for the job. You need to stay standing the whole time. Sorry. <laughs> he has tackled the full range of work that we do and has been very successful in at everything he has done. I would say that Dan is now very qualified to work on either the heavy duty or light side of the shop, making him very valuable to the city. Dan demonstrates Exemplary leadership abilities and has great work ethics. He is very helpful team player and always willing to help everyone. Thank you. And just one extra note, the, this department refurbishes a lot of our heavy trucks and fire equipment and saves the city quite a bit of money. And it's a great accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next we go to Lar Councilman Lars Nordfeld for the EAC Division of the Quarter Award. Thanks. Uh, we will recognize 
Westphalia Police Department's forensics unit, if they could please stand to be recognized for all their hard work. This was written by Amy Cotterman. The forensics department consists of only five forensic techs. However, one of them was away for six months training and one director to process evidence from 141 officers and detectives. They process items such as rocks, they do get a lot of these, all the way to homicide scenes, and these ladies never turn a request away. In addition to this, they also are responsible for fingerprinting the public twice a week for six hours a day, and they are lined up outside their door all day. They also get subpoenas for court frequently in which they have to testify as expert witnesses, and these usually take most of the day. They are on a rotating on-call schedule in a city as big as West Valley. You can imagine this is a pretty big job. In the previous year, 2013, they were called out 120 times, and usually when it is a big case, like a homicide or a robbery, which most of these call-outs are, more than one of them responds to the scene. Aside from being called out, they have also processed over 1,600 cases. Most cases consist of multiple items for fingerprints or drugs, resulting in many suspects being identified. These ladies work an extreme amount of hours, and they should be commended for all they do for the West Valley Police Department. Thank you. Next we have a proclamation honoring Godfrey Trucking Incorporated with the Business Legacy Award. Uh, and I understand that we do have Scott Godfrey here, is that correct? Representing, oh there you go, over there. And so I don't know if you have anyone else with you representing your company, but thank you for coming this evening. Uh, it's my opportunity to uh, read this particular proclamation. And I will do that now. Whereas the Business Legacy Award is an award recognizing local businesses that have made significant achievements and a long-standing commitment to doing business in West Valley City, and whereas the award is symbolized by the bald eagle, the eagle's abilities to fly and hunt are not entirely innate, but are honed by observing its parents. This process is called imprinting bonding with parents from birth and following their examples until the eagle can fly and hunt on its own. And whereas the city desires to recognize businesses whose imprint upon the community and the next generation uphold the city's legacy of unity, pride, and progress, and whereas Godfrey Trucking, Inc. began business in 1965, when Richard Godfrey opened a truck terminal in a small building near 60th West and 21st South, and whereas the business continued to grow as a family business, focusing on establishing a medium to long haul truckload and less than truckload carrier of general commodities, and whereas in 1997, Scott Godfrey, owner and president, continued to build the traditional side of the business and to advance the vision of opportunities in logistics, constructing a 41,000 square foot building and 26,000 square foot warehouse. And whereas for nearly 50 years, the business has grown to include a diverse product mix, operating in 48 states and Canada, with a mission to provide customers with superior and professional service at a fair rate to value safety, to invest in employees, to contribute to the community, and to maintain leadership roles in the transportation industry. 
Now, therefore, we, the Mayor and City Council of West Valley City, Utah, do hereby proclaim that Godfrey Trucking, Inc. is a legacy business and hereby award Godfrey Trucking, Inc. with the Business Legacy Award. Thank you for coming tonight. We appreciate being able to have you here and to recognize you. And then last in this part of our agenda, uh, proclamation, um, Councilman Steve Vincent will take that. Thank you. A proclamation declaring or uh, designating April 21st, 2014 through April 25th, 2014 as Community Development Block Grant Week in West Valley City. Whereas the Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, program was enacted and signed into law by President Gerald Ford and the centerpiece of the Housing and Community Development Act of, of 1974, and whereas the CDBG program has as its primary objective the development of viable urban communities by providing decent housing and a suitable living environment and expanding economic opportunities principally for persons of low and moderate income and whereas the CDBG program has considerable flexibility to allow communities to carry out activities that are tailored to their unique affordable housing and neighborhood re revitalization needs and whereas West Valley City with CDBG funds in the approximate amount of 26,000 26 million uh, 55984 since 1989 has provided low moderate income housing for families and seniors, parks, streets, public services, and neighborhood services. Now, therefore, we, the Mayor and City Council of West Valley City, do hereby proclaim the week of April 21st, 2014 through April 25th, 2014, as Community Development Block Grant Week and encourage all citizens to join together expressing support for the Community Development Block Grant Program. Thank you, Mr. Vinson. Uh, uh, that concludes our portion of the agenda for uh, our awards and recognitions. And, uh, Although I didn't do it earlier, I did not see any scout groups or anyone here visiting other than what we might have on our agenda. Uh, next, we have our public comment period. We have several people who have signed up. I suspect that some of those will be here to comment on the uh, uh, last, or towards the end of our agenda, our last official item of unfinished business. We held a uh, open public meeting on that uh, in a previous meeting. This is now to revisit it. We can either have these individuals speak during our comment period or if you want to open up again another public hearing on this item, we can do that later in the, when we get to that item. 
and I don't know what's been the practice in the past or you have unfinished business. Councilman Bueller, your comments, please. My thought, Mayor, would be we also have two public hearings scheduled tonight. I think some of those people may be here to speak on those as well. And That's correct. So I think that uh, probably whatever comments would be made could be handled at this time as public comment. If they're not on the two scheduled public hearings, we probably have time to accommodate anybody that wants to speak on any issue, including the unfinished business. Okay. So if you're here to uh, speak on uh, our new business, or let's see, public hearing on uh, uh, Travis Cunningham representing the E Properties, the West Valley Commerce Center subdivision, and also the Blaine Walker requesting final plat approval, S2-2014 and S5-2014, or they may also be known as Ordinance 1422 and Ordinance 1423. If so, we will open public comment time so you can speak at that point. And then as well, for the ordinance on uh, uh, governing animals, we will, we, sh we should have plenty of time to have another public hearing. So with that, if you're not speaking on those, then we welcome you to come up. We have several people signed up, I suspect it may be for some of those. Any other? There were no other? Those will all be done, and we will give you time later in the agenda. Okay. Then with that, any comments uh, from our city manager? No, sir, not this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments from our city council that you'd like to bring up here? Mr. Mayor. Councilman Rushton. Just real quickly, as Councilman Vincent had read the proclamation declaring it a community development block grant, we had thought it might be worth mentioning that earlier today the city council went and toured a house that had been uh, just up the street that had been uh, refurbished uh, uh, in large part due to community development block grant funds. And so sometimes it sounds rather ambiguous as to what these are and what they're used for but we now have a prime example of uh, what those funds can be used with uh, in our city to really make a, a, a big difference on a neighborhood and a community and, and uh, yeah, i know you can't see the pictures but night and day difference in our staff working with our uh, other community partners to do this has done a great job and it was a very worthwhile tour that the council took today so thank you thank you councilman rushton now we will proceed with our agenda. We announce that, uh, for those who may not be aware, the items that we have on our agenda through the rest of our discussion were discussed in a previous study session. So even the unfinished business one has had several discussions. The others we have discussed and had information on. So. If we don't spend a lot of time on it, you will understand why in our discussion, because we've had ongoing discussion on this before. With that understanding, we will now move to item number eight on our agenda. Uh, this is to uh, deal with uh, application number S2-2014 filed by Travis Cunningham, representing E-Properties LLC, requesting a plat amendment for Lot 1 of the West Valley Commerce Center subdivision. This is approximately 3318 South Decker Lake Drive. I believe that this is the one where there are two restaurants on a single piece of property. And for uh, various reasons, it makes sense to divide the property into two legally separate pieces. We did discuss in detail uh, how that was divided and the parking, and there will be, uh, as I understand it from our discussion, uh, an agreement, whether it's placed in the, the deed or in some contractual agreement, that they will work together since that parking is shared back and forth between the two restaurants. Now, is there anything else that we ought to mention on this particular item? Okay. To the council then. Oh, excuse me, that's right. First, the public hearing. We officially open the public hearing on this item for anyone who wish to, wishes to speak 
to this issue. Yes, please come forward. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Joe Cunningham. I live at 4139 South Colt Court in West Valley City, Utah. Uh, I'm representing Travis Cunningham, Kate Cunningham, and the Crowder Family Partnership on this uh, two parcels. Travis was unable to attend tonight. He's uh, taking his small eight-month-old daughter to Instacare for whatever it is this time of year, right? <laughs> as, as young parents often do. But uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to, to see this finally gone through tonight. We've had the property for probably the last 12 to 14 years. Um, it has been divided on power, on water, on utilities. Everything's been divided the entire time. We have one tax notice, which is kind of a burden when it comes time for the tenants to each pay and to deal with those things separately. Uh, we have submitted to staff and it's been reviewed. They have a cross easement agreement which will be signed by all the property owners and recorded at the same time that the flat is recorded. And the cross easement then covers all the parking and any of those other unfinished items. So those were the only things I think I needed to say. Is there any questions I could answer? Or I hate to stall things. It's moving along so swiftly tonight. <laughs> Council members? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else to speak on this particular issue on our agenda? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing part of our agenda and come back to the council uh, for action or comment on ordinance number 1422 or application number S2 2014. Uh, <coughs> Councilman Young. Thank you, Mayor. I move, uh, I move for approval of application number S-2-2014, which is ordinance number 14-22. Uh, Thank you. We have the motion properly before us. Do we have a second? Second. Councilman Vincent, a second. Uh, then the motion is now properly before us. Discussion to this issue? Seeing none. We will place it for a vote. All in favor of approving this application, number 2014, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Now we go to application number S-5-2014. Uh, this uh, is at 4450 South, 5400 West, final flat approval for phase one and two of Ashley Commons subdivision. Uh, we will now open the public hearing. Uh, we're okay, we're, I think we have all the information. This is, is there anything else you needed to bring up on Not this? on this item, sir. I was just passing you a note uh, uh, concerning the public comment period, which you can address after uh, this public hearing if, you, if you'd like to, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, we will take care of that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we'll continue with this portion and we'll get back to the, that public comment in just a minute. So let's open the public hearing on this item and now we turn it to you. Is there anyone here to speak on this issue? Thank you. My name is Blaine Walker. My office is at 235 West, 1000 South. Suite 250 and Sandy. I really don't have any comments unless there's any questions, Mayor. Now these are uh, two separate pieces that are going to be, of course, planted for a future home right. on 5400 West. So if you, have, if you don't have any questions, I don't have any comments. Uh, no, we had some discussion last week. I think we're at the point that we would just move ahead, I guess. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Anyone else? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing portion of um, uh, this uh, particular item and come back to the council for action. Councilman Vincent. Mayor, I move for uh, to approve uh, ordinance number 1423. We have the motion before us. Do we have a second? I make a substitute motion. 
That is in order. Uh, state your motion. I'm happy to see the subdivision come back. I'm happy to see it platted with the larger lots that we discussed before. My one concern is the road between 56th West and 54th West. And my substitute motion would be to move for approval of Ordinance 1423, approving the subdivision subject to um, the developer consulting with Public Works and the installation of some traffic calming or traffic deterrence on that road. Now, the road could be built, but with some uh, calming or deterrence on that road so that it doesn't become just a shortcut for people that are not residents of that area. Thank you. That motion is properly before us. Do we have a second? A second. We have a second. Discussion to the motion. Councilman Rushton. Yeah, thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank Mr. Walker for being here tonight. As uh, you know, sometimes when you get to this this point in the in the uh, in the process, it's it's a big relief, and and I like some of the others are very excited to see this subdivision go through and uh, the new homes and uh, the new vibrancy that will be added to that area. As many of you know, I have a lot of ties to the area, and and uh, Mr. Uh, uh, I guess I just wanted to mention that. Uh, you know, with some of my close family as well as some of my extended family that's been involved in this project, and I've spoken with them about it. There's been two things that they have came back to me and, and reported on it. And the first thing is, is uh, how good Mr. Walker was to work with. That this was a, a large project, but yet it's kind of a small project, and there was a lot of issues, and that he uh, was very attentive to the, the needs of the, uh, the, the surrounding subdivisions as well as the, as well as the neighbors. And uh, just what a pleasure he was to work with, and so I thank you for that, Mr. Mr. Walker, on that. And the second thing I heard often was just how great Mr. Steve Lehman was to work with. That he had to broker many things and tie things together and uh, uh, work some of his magic uh, in order to help this move along in a in a timely and orderly fashion. So uh, I uh, excited to see this project move forward, and thank all those that uh, have worked on it. And I think it'll be a, a great addition to our neighborhood and and. Uh, I think with the suggestion made of just taking a, of having our public works take a second look at uh, maybe some traffic situation, I think it'd be well warranted and not delay or slow or uh, cause any undue burden to moving this project forward. So I speak in favor and, and urge you all to vote the same. Thank you. Further discussion from the council, Councilman Vincent. I just make one comment in regards to the the traffic flow here. I think when this uh, first came to us, that street did go straight through, and, and I think by uh, redesigning this with the two turns, I think they may have already accomplished what you're asking for them to, to do, but i just make that comment. Thank you, Mr. Benson. Further discussion? Uh, to our city recorder, were you able to get that uh, motion, or else you're going to do it afterwards, word for word? Okay. Thank you. Uh, seeing no further discussion, we'll place it for a vote. All in favor of that motion on Ordinance 14-23 as amended, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. With that, uh, as it turns out, there was someone who wanted to speak in the public comment period but misunderstood my comments, or probably more likely, I didn't make my comments clear enough. And so we don't want to prevent someone from speaking, so uh, Council, with your permission, we're going to go back to that point and allow, uh, it's Jody Fault? Fate? Fate. Jody Fate, if you would come forward. Good evening, Council Mayor. I apologize, I missed the boat the first time around. I'm a novice at this, so um, I appreciate you coming back to me. My name is Jody Fate, and I am the Assistant Program Manager at the Children's Justice Center. We are a child advocacy center, and we have a yearly event that I have come to um, give you some information about and extend a special invitation to all of you. Um, we do a yearly event called Cops for Kids. I believe you have a flyer about that. Um, this is an evening where um, Sizzler opens their restaurant and we host an event where all proceeds go towards our Children's Justice Center. So we are a nonprofit organization. We have our law enforcement agencies that come in and actually wait the tables, serve the drinks, bust the tables, 
um, work really hard, usually after a shift that they've already worked um, for their own agency, come in on their own time. All of the tips go towards the Children's Justice Center. This is actually the fourth year that West Valley is participating in this event. Um, we also participate with West Jordan, Sandy, and this year Salt Lake City has come on board. So we've got a little competition there and we're really encouraging you to all come out and support your people, your investigators, your um, police officers, here, us at the CJC, as well as your community as well. It's a really great event. Um, for those of you that don't know the Children's Justice Center, we provide a place, a comfortable, friendly place for kids during the child abuse investigation to have the forensic interview. So we do a lot of important work there, and the money that's raised is great. Um, lastly, I don't really get the opportunity to um, throw some kudos out to our investigators and our West Valley people other than to our professionals. So I just wanted to let you all know you have some top-notch investigators who are dedicated and hardworking and very well respected by all of us and we're really really grateful for them so thank you for giving me the chance and we hope to see you the event is next tuesday april 22nd from 4 till 8 30. thank you thank you uh, and again any council comment councilman Vince. i'd just like to say this is one of uh, those really fun events to go to and typically several of us leave right after council meeting and, and go over to the Sizzler. And uh, it's always fun to see our, our our police officers over there in uniform and, and busing tables and, and delivering food and and uh, understand uh, they do very well in their tips as well. So I would hope that all of us would get over there and, and be very generous tippers. Thank you very much, and certainly over the years as I've worked with the Children's Justice Center and heard the many uh, great things being done by uh, those centers, uh, it is certainly a vital part of our community and a very critical role that is played. So uh, please convey, certainly on my part and certainly on the Council's part, uh, our thanks to them for the work that they do. Thank you else there we will move on then to item number nine on our agenda resolutions and uh, this uh, resolution 14-60 uh, a slope easement from the Rushton family partnership and uh, this property would be approximately 6400 west 2540 South, and this is on the east end of uh, that roadway. I believe the roadway is going to be built there, and there is a difference in elevation, and this gives an easement <coughs> there to re work on that. I don't know, not having actually seen it, it's kind of hard to visualize, although I know there's a difference that has to be dealt with. That's some three, approximately three or four feet, Mr. Pot. Yeah, I don't know what the exact uh, um, difference is, but you've illustrated it correctly, sir. In fact, we just need to be able to overcome that in the construction. Yeah. So, with that then, to the council for comment or discussion. May I move for approval of resolution 1460? Councilman Bueller moves the approval of resolution 1460. And we need a second. Second. We have a second from uh, Councilwoman Lang. That is properly before us. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll place that motion for a vote. All in favor of approving uh, ordinance, excuse me, resolution number 14-60, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. New business, application S-3-2014. This is for final plat approval for the Stonebridge Business Center subdivision at uh, 2400 South 40th West. Okay, just north of Lynx Drive and uh, just west of Bangadar Highway. It is a single piece of property that will be uh, divided into two pieces. Uh, and of course, uh, these are items we've discussed before. Any 
further comments on that uh, to the council for comments or action. Councilman Vincent. Uh, Mayor, uh, I'll move for approval of application S3 2014. Second. We have a second. Councilman Bueller? Yeah. Uh, that motion is properly before us. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll place it for a vote. All in favor of application S3 2014, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. We go on now to application number S4 2014, uh, requesting final plan approval for the McMillan subdivision at 5351 West, 3500 South. Uh, this application takes an existing property with two homes uh, with uh, frontage on 3500 South and divides it into two separate lots. Uh, those homes are two well-established brick homes right there and uh, as I understand that the dividing of this will require the demolition of some structures on the property to make this work. We'll end up with two. There is a variation or there was a uh, not an exemption but a variance allowed due to the frontage being insufficient uh, but it was because these are existing homes that have been there for a number of years the variance was approved and is now before us uh, to see if the council will approve this so to this application to the council Mr. Mayor, I would move that we approve uh, application S4 2014. We have a motion before us to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Councilman Vincent, a second. So the motion is properly before us. Any discussion? Just See? one comment, Mayor. Yes, Mr. Councilman Vincent. Uh, just a comment based on uh, Councilman Rustin's comments of last week uh, that, that uh, he'll lose his old swimming hole as a result of this so yeah things change so. yeah they do they can be filled old councilman rush i would just like, like to, to respond uh, no i would just like to further comment that you know, it's it's rare on a night that we split a commercial two restaurants but then the same night we're splitting uh, a lot or a, you know one uh, uh, two houses and that were one lot into two and so i I wonder how often those those stars align, but uh, you know, it's it's a, just a sign of the progress and uh, going through the process. And so, uh, good to uh, help Merlene and her family and that move on. Okay, thank you. Seeing no further discussion, we'll place that motion for a vote. All in favor of approving application S four twenty fourteen for final plat approval. Please say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. The motion passes unanimously. We now go to item number 11, unfinished business, to consider ordinance number 14-19. And I believe we do have some people here to speak on this. Is that correct? Okay. Then what I will do is open a public hearing portion uh, for this. And with that open, we would invite Excuse me. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we open the public hearing. Oh. Okay. Amend, amend to the agenda and open a public hearing. Thank you. That is the correct procedure to follow. Sir. Second. Pardon me. And sir, if I might add, add to that, what you're in actuality doing here is reopening the public hearing that you, that you had previously closed. Okay. The motion is that we reopen the public hearing on ordinance number 14-19. That has been seconded. Any discussion? Uh, uh, Councilman Rush. <laughs> I'm sorry to split hairs on here, but I'm kind of wondering if anyone is here. Yes. To speak on it. Oh, they okay. are. I already checked that. Okay. That's why we're doing it. So, with that, no further discussion. Then, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion <clears throat> passed unanimously. Our public hearing is open. And we would invite anyone here who has come to speak to come forward to the microphone.
Trebish, 2997 Burlingame Drive, West Valley. Thank you, Council. Mr. Mayor, I was reading through all the material that was posted on the website, and am I correct that these are the, the highlighted sections are the proposed changes? I believe that that is correct. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because I was just reading all this. My, the only thing I have, because in the previous meeting that you had, when Salt Lake Tribune so graciously advertised it, um, my, my opinion was that it should be denied. But if you choose to make this um, change, I would make the suggestion that anybody that does build a coop for any birds, ducks, whatever, that they be within two feet of the residence instead of being as far away from that home as possible. Otherwise, um, I'm pretty happy with this. It's, I mean, I like the idea that's four animals. You can have one cat and four chickens. I mean, three chickens, I don't care, so. But yeah, I, that's my opinion. Um, just that the coops be as close to the residents as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else here to speak on this ordinance? Seeing none. Now, do we need to take a motion to close this since it was on our agenda? Or close it? We just close it. Okay. We will close the public hearing on this item on the agenda. Now we come back to the council for comment or action. Um, motion to. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, motion to approve amendments uh, number 14 dash 19. We have a motion before us to approve ordinance 14 dash 19, uh, governing animals. Do we have second. a second? We have a second, Councilman Buell. Discussion to the motion. Councilman Vincent. Mayor, I'll just uh, uh, reiterate uh, my feelings about this as we talked in, in our study session, and that is that I don't believe this is the proper place to take care of this uh, ordinance. I think that uh, uh, for, for a couple of reasons, uh, and I've addressed those with, with the housing of the chickens, this doesn't address that, this doesn't address um, some of the other issues that I think are important for, for uh, this and, and why I believe there ought to be a separate foul ordinance for this. Um, also, I think as I've thought about it over over some t the last few weeks, I, I think that even our chicken people are going to be, the people who want to raise chickens are going to be unhappy with this because um, if it's a compilation of all of their pets, most of them already have a uh, few other pets in their home and so the restrictions would essentially be that they don't have chickens. And so I don't think this is the, the proper place to, to address this. So uh, I, I would, would not be supporting this and, and would more support a separate ordinance for keeping domestic fowl. Thank you. Further discussion? Councilman Bueller. Mayor, I'd like to speak for the motion and for the ordinance. Uh, first, I would state that I would never have a chicken as a pet. And also, I would never, ever have a cat as a pet. <laughs> and uh, yet, there are plenty of cats in the city, and there are plenty of chickens in the city already. Um, I think that chickens has become kind of the... Uh, firestorm of this ordinance, and yet the ordinance is not about chickens. I don't understand why chickens draw such ire when this ordinance allows rodents, such as mice and rats, to be pets, allows spiders, allows ducks and other birds as pets, allows ferrets and hedgehogs and insects, allows reptiles, and allows pot-bellied pigs. This is, in fact, the second time this council's voted on pot-bellied pigs and allowed them since I've been on the council. And yet, uh, 
chicken somehow stick in our craw. Um, as far as maybe this would better fit in a domestic fowl ordinance, I, I partially agree with that, except that we don't have a domestic fowl ordinance in front of us. It's disingenuous to say we'll strike chickens and then pass a domestic fowl ordinance because when we had a domestic fowl ordinance in front of us, we did not pass it. And that wasn't very long ago. That was while I was on the council as well. I would rather allow a couple of hands as pets uh, and people have to choose. Am I going to have dogs or am I going to have chickens? Am I going to have a ferret or a hedgehog or a pot-bellied pig and a chicken? Or what am I going to do? You know, that people can decide and govern that and have the freedom to choose, which I think is important. I would rather have allow a couple of chickens than uh, start building hen houses with more chickens, and I think that's where the perceived uh, nuisance comes in with bringing in a flock of chickens and having a commercial venture to, to create eggs. Uh, my opinion on this whole concept changed when we had people attend our council meetings, some little children who received chickens, chicks for some reason, as rewards at school, and then uh, could not have them at their home and would not be allowed by our laws to raise them and learn the responsibility of taking care of those chickens until such time as they decided they no longer wanted to have chickens and got rid of them. And I, I think this is a, a good cover for all kinds of animals that may be kept uh, as pets. Thank you. Further discussion? Councilman Lordfeld. I just want to add that uh, um, the chickens that we're talking about here, and I, and I think the chickens are a major part of this ordinance just because we've allowed the other animals before. And, and this, is a, this is a change in what we're allowing. And um, I think that, uh, that often a lot of our residents think of the chickens of their youth and the, the big chicken coops, um, the big smelly chicken coops that were, that were on very large lots. That, uh, I remember my grandparents having a, a large chicken coop and, and, and many chickens. But um, today there's a, there's a new surge in, the, in owning chickens in urban areas. And, and there's a lot of people who um, would like to do that for valid reasons, to, to, to raise their own eggs. Um, that are not um, injected with hormones or or other such things, and and right now our law prevents them from doing that. Um, right now there are a lot of chickens in our city, but it's only the people that are not abiding the law who are who are keeping them. And this would allow law-abiding citizens to to have just four chickens, not. The huge smelly chicken coops of our of our youth, but um, I, I think that that four chickens in a residential zone is is a reasonable thing. And, and I'm not against uh, a domestic fowl ordinance that that might um, stipulate other restrictions uh, and, and perhaps allow for more chickens on larger lots, but. Uh, but for right now, I'm, I'm, I'm in support of this motion. Thank you. Councilman Rushton. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, I appreciate the, the going through the process on this. Uh, I think it's interesting as you, when you set out to do something, how sometimes it takes on a different life of its own and, and things get uh, uh, centered upon one issue, in this case chickens. But I do want to take it to step, step back on this and, and uh, say that, you know, really the the driving force behind this was to, A, to clean up our ordinance from our animal ordinance and our land use ordinance, so that there's some places in seeming conflict, and then the second part of it was to get uh, the nuisance part of it brought into, so it's in the same spot, so you can read, uh, you know, just what, uh, you know, the responsibilities of animal ownership and, and what's expected of each one, and so uh, in bringing that all together, I am thrilled and, and uh, very happy that we were able to get to this point and, and uh, kudos to all those uh, that worked on it and the legal staff and as well as Councilman Bueller for um, getting us kick-started on this and, and trying to help guide the discussion from the council through this. 
you know, what I learned going through the public hearing on the discussion on the chickens was is it, um, it wasn't so much that people were for chickens or against chickens. It was that uh, I think they wanted to know that, uh, that uh, having chickens or having dogs or having spiders or anything that uh, is allowed in animal ordinance could be dealt with responsibly and that there would be a recourse to where if certain people uh, did behave responsibly with with their animals and and so I you know I, I hope that uh, you know that is that's sufficient in, in, in way in the way that we have it and the way we have it addressed because I do think that there is some ground that we could have chickens in West Valley City and uh, have the right uh, have the right uh, guidelines and rest and restrictions and recourse for when they're not taken care of and that uh, the, the vast, vast majority of everyone could live with it. Um, coming into the but, and it's things that I've said and things that uh, have, have been echoed here about you know, the appropriateness of, of a domestic fowl ordinance, and I just want to throw in a little bit of a personal story that I can relate back to this, is today is tax day. And I know we look at the taxes, and, and as I worked on my taxes over the last week, because my wife worked in Tennessee, and was actually a resident of Tennessee for the last year, and I was in Utah and doing the Utah thing. And we have federal taxes, we have Tennessee taxes, we have Utah taxes, have all our taxes. And you know, I was just dumbfounded how different states, the different requirements that Tennessee has versus Utah versus the federal government, and uh, how they all had their own different say on how much taxes we were supposed to pay, and and how we could rework the thing and get different outcomes. And you know, it really brought me back to you know the way of having responsible chickens is to have uh, chicken ownership in residential zones line up with federal, with state, with county health ordinance, and that's our box, and that's how we should work with it, and not uh, step out of the chicken ownership part and do things that are contrary to the Department of Agriculture, to uh, the state classifications, or the county health department, which has always been my line of saying, hey, I think that's a good starting place on chicken ownership is to follow the, uh, the county health department. And so, you know, with that, I congratulate the, the, uh, the work that's been done, you know, on this ordinance and, and to get it to that point. But the thing that I can't get over is that, you know, the state and, and the, the federal government, the health department, they have classified chickens as uh, certain regulated types of animals. And you know, there's prohibited. Uh, there's, the state classifies alligators as prohibited things. We've kept alligators and all prohibited animals out of this. There's the uncontrolled animals like the dogs and the cats, which was the, comp the composition of our last ordinance. And then there's certain exotic animals that are regulated that you have to have a license for, certain snakes and certain fish. And then there's the other regulated animals that are cattle and chicken and, and uh, uh, pigs that provide pork and that. And that. I, I guess I just get real nervous of taking a state and a Department of Agriculture classification and kind of saying, well, it doesn't really apply, you know, to us here. And so, um, so I think that's going to prevent me from voting for the ordinance, even though I applaud because of that one part of the chickens and the and the considerable interest that has been in that, and to to uh, vote no for it, but uh, of course make it well known that uh, you know if we could follow county and and state and and uh, federal guidelines on it that I think that there is a place in, for chickens in uh, residential zones here in West Valley City. So thank you. Councilman Vincent. Yeah, just one last thing. Uh, I, I want I want the, the residents to, to be clear that I'm not anti-chicken. I have sisters that raise chickens and I've been a beneficiary of, of those eggs and so uh, but I, I, I don't like the idea of, of telling these families that may already have uh, two dogs that now you're only going to get two chickens, you know, because I, I think it just it's counter to what they what they actually want. And so again, I'll just say that I'm not against chickens, but I just believe that this is is the wrong place, and I believe that uh, we can do a better job for our residents. Thank you, Councilman. Excuse me, but I just um, um, go back with the statements and you mentioned about two dogs and two uh, chickens. But the flip side of that, if a person wants 
four chickens, and they have, you know, two chick chickens and you know, two dogs, and they can have four four chickens. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I think that you've got to look at both sides. You know, one person wants two dogs and have only two chickens, but on our side, the people they want four chickens. You see, I don't know, but I think this is a good. Uh, Things that we are going for for this time, and I think that's good for uh, people in our um, cities, and they are looking forward to having their chickens for a long time. Thank you. Further comments? Well, it's an opportunity then for me to uh, make a couple of comments. Uh, again, I'm in favor of allowing chickens, and have made that very public to a number of people that I have talked with. My concern with this, and by the way, this is my first, very first opportunity to deal with chickens or animal ordinances of any kind in the city. As I've listened to discussions, there are people who want chickens and there are people who are concerned about them. How do those two concerns get dealt with? Allowing chickens is half of the issue. The other half is, do we have sufficient tools in place for our ordinance enforcement people to be able to deal with the challenges when people do not properly care for chickens? Uh, and this is very different from dogs. Dogs you can let run around the backyard and it doesn't make much difference. You're going to have the same impact on your neighbors unless there are other mitigating circumstances. Chickens, however, can, uh, if not properly taken care of, can get up on fences or into other people's yards. Uh, the issue of dealing with their politically correct byproducts, Waste. and I don't mean eggs, Waste. Um, are more difficult to deal with and can have a significant impact. Most people who will who will use this ordinance and have chickens, there's no issue. But we already have people in the city who are, who have chickens and who are not taking care of them, and we have not been successful in combating that. My concern is that we've missed that. I would like to have it in a separate ordinance or a separate section of the code because I would like to have more tools to be able to deal with those who want to do them and do it correctly and then provide tools that would uh, allow the city to deal, deal with problems where they are not being dealt with properly and are impacting in a significant way their neighbors. The only way I know how to do that would be to have different requirements, different penalties, and di different options for ordinance enforcement people to deal with. So, for that reason, you know, I want a, another bite at the apple, not at the chicken, but, uh, so I will vote no because I want to come back and visit it again. It's been the funnest issue I've dealt with here at the city, so. Thank you. Seeing no further comment, we will place the motion for a vote. Since this, there's going to be, apparently, I'm guessing, eyes and nose, uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Is that the proper term? Yes. Okay. Um, our recorder will take care of that. Vincent. No. Mike? Aye. Mr. Huber? Aye. Mr. Kim? Yes. Mr. Rexton? No. Hi. No. Motion passes four to three. That concludes our work on that item for tonight. Uh, I don't have anything else on the agenda. No executive session. So therefore, one final motion. Unless you want to stay. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Oh. Motion to adjourn. Doesn't require a second, non-debatable. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. aye.
Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passed unanimously. We are adjourned.